Aha! This is Labort. It is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. First, we primed the miniatures using Vallejo's Black Primer. Oh, and who's that behind the mask? Don't worry, guys, it's just good old Papa Labort. Now, prime the skeletons. Oh, and you can see my super cool airbrush booth. Don't be jelly, I will make a Kickstarter campaign for this and don't worry as most of the hobby products this will be unreasonably overpriced as well. I give all the minis a light coat of Necromancer Clock. It's the same way like you would do a Zenithal Priming. Now I start applying the highlights for the mini. Jonathan gave me an idea for this value sketching method. He's one of my patrons and a beautiful and wise man and if you want to be like him you can find the Patreon link in the video description. Now value sketching or underpainting it's a kind of similar approach like zenithal priming. NG and Marco made a great video about value sketching so you might want to check it out if you are interested in the history of it and have a deeper understanding about the process. Basically we create the highlights with greys and later we will fill the mini with thin coats of contrast paints. If you don't have contrast paints that's perfectly fine, just dilute your regular paints to a wash consistency and you'll be fine. You can use a contrast medium which will turn your paints to contrast paints basically. I'm using downstone for the first highlight. This coat will be our mid-tone. This method is great for speed painting because we can apply one color over the whole mini so we don't need to change colors all the time when we want to paint different parts. The method is all the same for the skeleton leader so I will include some footage for him as well to help you with highlight placements. For the back of the fur cloak I dry brush the paint to make the process even faster. Remember to always wet your dry brush a tiny bit then wipe it off on a paper towel to have just a little bit of moisture in your brush but I leave this up to you if you want to have a dusty look for the skeletons or not. It would uh, make sense for them because they oil and the dusty. When you apply downstone, continue the process with administratum grey. Gradually decrease the highlight areas and try to create texture with your paint. This is crucial. Either apply tiny dots or lines to imitate scratches or just a worn look. It will make your mini a lot more interesting. I use base layer and heavy glaze consistency back and forth while applying the highlights. Applying these monochromatic highlights are the time consuming part. Not that it takes too long because if you don't count the drying time for the contrast paints these bony bad boys take like 30 minutes to paint per mini and they look super nice when finished. With the leader guy I spent a little more time with uh, smoothing out the layers because I really like the sculpt and that uh, classic skeleton overlord look with the black cloak and uh, whatnot. I really like to show you one part where I applied the highlight for the skeleton leader and it looked a bit out of place. When something looks a bit hard to blend, just create texture around it. This is the other big feature of creating texture. It's not only would make the surface more interesting, but also it helps blending the colors tremendously. As you see, I leave all the metal parts unpainted because we will paint them with metallic colors. Even though you know Papa Labors like to do some tasty NMM on batch painting, like uh, in the Fire Entity tutorial. So check that video too if you haven't already. We dry brush the Administratum Grey as well. If you want, you can dry brush the whole mini, not just the back of the clock, if you do it lightly. The highlights created by the dry brush will complement our layer of highlights that we did in the previous step. Ok, final highlight for the bony boys with white grey. It's a nice cold of white. Decrease the highlight areas with it even more while continuing the texture creating process. 
Before we apply the contrast paints, this will be our brightest highlight, so try to focus on the upper body parts and mainly the face. I'm in the school. Edge highlight basically everything to make our paint job crispy like roasted little piggy's ear. If you feel like it, you can glaze some between the layers, but for the small skeletons I think you'll be fine without it, because everything is rough about them. Their shield, their leather armor and cloak all have a general rough look, so there is no point making it super smooth. And this roughness is greatly welcomed when we do a gentle dry brush with the white grey. It's really important to be gentle. It's like petting a little baby hamster. If you do it gently, the hamster stays alive. If you do it with too much force, the hamster dies. But before that, it will bite you. Then you drop it to the floor. So maybe the hamster will die from falling and not from petting. But the point is, do it softly, so everybody can stay alive. Okay, that was the hard part. I know, right? It was super easy. And the rest of the process is much more simpler. Now we fill the mini with color. I'm using skeleton hoard for the bone parts. This is really important, you guys. Use thin coats of contrast paint. We have our shadows and highlights already, so there is no need for the contrast paint to pull up and ruin those parts. Thin Coats. Or you can try and use heavy coats, but then open your window and put out your arm so papala boards can fly next to your house and slap on your tiny hand. Use gore grunt of fur for the leather armor and the shield. Gulliman flesh for the fur cloak. And while it's wet, add some agaros dunes for the upper parts to add some yellow tones to it. Add wildwood for the belts and leather straps. Wildwood is a very opaque contrast paint, so thin it down because it will cover all your highlights, and we do not want that. Unless you want a slap on your tiny hand. For the sword grip, add some Blood Angels Red, and for the little thingy on its helmet, which uh, Papa Laborts forgot to paint while shooting the video, uh, but you should do that as well with Blood Angels Red. Now before we move on to the metallics, give a nice dry brush of Ushapti Bone to get back some of our highlights that the contrast paints muted. Obviously you can do it with some glazes, with different colors for different parts, but it would take a big chunk of time and we want to finish these skeletons really fast. This dry brushing is really gentle, but you can see that all of our edges are getting a nice edge highlight from it. For the metallic parts, I use gunmetal. Change your brush and get another water pot for metallics. Be careful and try to be precise, especially on the scabbard of the sword, and with the tiny rivets throughout his uh, standard leather armor. If you make a mistake here, then try to look for a similar paint that looks like the stained area. Don't try to fix it with contrast paints, because it won't cover the metallic parts. Most of the contrast paints won't do that, some will, but uh, more likely you will ruin the highlights around it. So, nice and pointy tip for your brush, and the steady hand will be your greatest ally next to Papa Laborts, who is waiting eagerly for you to make a mistake and then slap on your tiny hand, but I'm sure you'll do just fine. For the cross guard of the sword and the pummel, use greedy gold. Then use two thin coats of null oil for all the metal parts. Let it flow into the crevices and uh, for the tiny rivets, well, you need to apply tiny coats as well, but it's no big deal. If it flows a bit around it, it will look like recess shading, so it's no problem. For a bit of highlight. Use some shining silver for the edges of the sword and give some extra shine to the helmet. You can glaze metallics just like regular paint, so you can blend the shining silver into the nulnoil coated gunmetal nicely. Same goes for the greedy gold parts, you can highlight them with bright gold. So that's it for the small skeletons. Now for the leader. 
The metallics and the bone parts are just as same as for the little ones, so the main difference is the cloak. Use Basilicanum Grey mixed with contrast medium to paint the cloak. I use the medium here because Basilicanum Grey is quite opaque and I don't want to lose the highlights over the cloak. But I do want the dark black parts, so while the first coat is wet, I add some pure Basilicanum Grey to the lower parts of the robe and wet blend the colors together. For the fur part of the cloak I use Agaros Dunes. Thin coat because I only want a touch of yellow on this section, not a lot. The boards forgot that the grip of the hammer is wood, so we will fix that with the same method and apply wild wood on it. Same dry brush process for the leader with Ushap T-bone, but to increase the contrast a bit more, I mix some ivory to the Ushap T-bone and dry brush that as well, but mostly around his upper body. For the metallic parts it's all the same as well, so no explanation needed here. For some finishing touches, I used ivory with a heavy glaze consistency to highlight the horns on his helmet and the skull of the skeleton. Really watch out for the paint consistency, because if it's too runny, then you should also watch out for your tiny hand because I will slap on it. So wipe your brush on a paper towel if the paint is a bit too runny. Now look at all these evil skeleton warriors painted. So nice. And they took like 30 minutes per skeleton, so they are quite fast to paint. If you want to vote on the next mini that Papa Labot should make a video about, you can do that on Patreon with early access to videos and other rewards. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos. With a special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes! Now, I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek. The birds are so nice.